Okay, here we are in overtime. I thought before I started with the questions, we might uh, get, if you wanted to, a rebuttal of our editorial there about Americans really being closet socialists from... Well, l let, me, uh, let me quote Margaret Thatcher. The problem with socialism is that eventually you run out of other people's money. And the difference between Europe and America and why America is so great is that Europe has haves and have-nots. You have rich people, they probably... <laughs> yeah. Thank God we don't have that here. You, Boy. You have rich people that have been rich for 10 generations, and you have poor people that can't get a job. They're not allowed... Into Actually, the social mobility, which is the ability of one generation to do better than the last one, we are 10th in the world. We are behind exactly right. a number of European countries. But America is different because anybody can do anything in this country. Nobody tells you what you can do. And, 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 and what, in Belgium, that doesn't... Uh, you know, this idea that America, this American exceptionalism, tell me where in those countries... Uh, no, in some countries, of course, we're not talking about Somalia, but in Western European nations, you, you can't do whatever you want? I'm talking about France, where the unions don't let young Muslim kids get jobs. And instead, you get riots in the street. There's no opportunity. There has to be growth. Well, there has to be opportunity. I, I would never say that there is nothing wrong with Europe. Of course, there are problems in Europe, too. I'm just, but uh, first of all, that was not even uh, addressing this point. Yeah, that, that editorial was completely non sequitur. That, uh, <laughs> not complete, but that editorial was saying that Americans are hypocrites because they hate the word socialism, but they constantly take money from the government and, and, and use socialist programs. Including people like Michelle Bachman. Farm subsidies, Medicare, Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac. What, what, why is she not a hypocrite? Well, let's talk about Medicare. Medicare is a program that everybody is forced to join when they're, not, when they're 65, right? So what happens if you want to buy health insurance outside of Medicare when you're 66? The doctor is punished, and you get you don't get the services that you want because there's no market for seniors' health care. This, wait, is, a, this wait, is a fundamental I, I problem. I don't want to get into some So when the guy with the sign, with the, with the guy with the sign is basically saying, you forced me into this program, and now you're saying that you're going to take half a trillion dollars out of Medicare and put it into Obamacare, grow the population, and create a ration system where less people get the health care they need. Okay, okay, okay. That's the bottom Matt, line. Matt, I hate to... You're, you're fundamentally wrong about so many things that you're saying here. You don't even know where to start. But... but Medicare. Medicare works. Medicare is efficient. The driver of health care costs is not limited to Medicare. It has completely right, different Medicare reasons. Right, problem, too. No, 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 it has completely different structural reasons. Medicare has been a remarkable program. Income inequality has gone up since the Reagan deregulatory policies went into place. Job growth has gone down. Europe has surpassed us. What Bill is saying is exactly right. Some sort of melding of the theology that you embrace, that it is all the private sector, and some notion that the public sector creates wealth, is obviously where you have to go. But you guys are ideologues who don't appreciate that. What are you going to do with the unfunded liabilities in these programs? The numbers well, simply don't work. And Matt, the only way that you solve that problem is by rationing Matt, people's care. Matt, if you had been listening to what many people, and I'm just one of many voices, have been saying, we have been saying very sensible things about changing Medicare, Medicaid. I changed Medicaid in New York State. I did it. I didn't say, let's just lower taxes. I said, let's change health care delivery. And we did it. We didn't wrap ourselves in the flag of lower taxes is the only answer. You guys are just one-note Charlies. No. Okay, let's go, let's go to the... Uh... <clears throat> Let's go to the questions from the uh, Internet. Why shouldn't we institute a luxury tax on non-essential goods and services such as boats, jewelry, and gambling? Uh, like we well. had in the 90s. We had luxury taxes in the 90s, and it, we, what we saw is that in specific industries, after not just, not just noticing that sales went down in those industries and people stopped buying those, that there was actually in the corporate jet their Learjet, actually, there was, a, there was a tax levied against people who were buying Learjets. Sales went down tremendously. They went around and questioned all the buyers. Why did you not buy them? It was the luxury tax. Luxury tax disincent disincentivizes purchases, well, sure, and then it decreases jobs. So if you, I mean, if you, if you want to actually affect the, hurt the economy, luxury taxes are not the way to grow an economy, to help businesses be able to invest, grow, create because, jobs. But it does, it, it's a little counterintuitive, because it doesn't seem like the kind of people who would be buying a corporate jet would be like on a budget. But the kind of people who are buying the corporate jets are creating jobs. They, they are, they well, are the job creators that, in the country. That is so 
not true. They, that is absolutely, it is absolutely they do not, they do fundamentally not, true. And, well, and I mean, that, I mean, if you want to go Of course, they do warfare. create some jobs, but you know, this idea that when we give them the money, as we've been doing for 30 years, the reason, what they will do with it is create jobs. Of course they don't. They create you, bonuses reason, for themselves. Can I give you a different reason why it doesn't make sense? Yes. It, it's, the real problem, it's not going to generate enough revenue. Now, if you really want to change the tax code, what we should do is repeal the Bush tax cuts for the wealthy. But do it across the board. Okay, okay. Don't just do so it for... So let's, so let's talk about taxes and taxing the wealthy, because the top 1% pay 38% of the tax share, right? Sure. So that what, top what percentage 1%, of the income do they get? And that, that top 1%... What percentage of the income do they get? That, that answer I don't know, but here's what... Well, but... Let me finish making my point. No, 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 but let me finish making my point. I'm going to finish making my point. You take that top 1% in 2008, you tax all of the taxable income that they can have. You generate $938 billion. The deficit in 2008 is $1.6 right. trillion. Dollars. So me, you can tax all the wealthy, one, all right. the top 1%. You're let not going to get nearly just ask enough one, income to let me pay just down ask the one, the we got to go. I'll just ask one basic question that's on this topic. Was this a better country when the rich paid more? And the rich used to pay a lot more, like in the 50s and the 90, 60s. Over 90%. Right. That's too much. But wasn't it a better... Really? Yeah. Well, 90%. I mean, yes. That's I think, what it was. I think that, but even that was not enough to drive what? you two out of the country. <laughs> <laughs> what, I don't remember what anybody... Was, what was the marginal tax rate when, you, when your great-grandfather was president? Well, it actually went up from 25% to 66% because... Oh, so your great-grandfather is 66% marginal taxes. rate. Raise taxes. That's why conservatives slam him, actually. I know, but was it a better country? Yes. Wasn't it a better country? Wasn't there a more thriving middle class? Yeah. I mean, is, the, is, it, is it complete? In the last 30 years, we've seen from Reagan onward, including Clinton, we've seen this giant transference of wealth to the top 1%. They used to have 8% of the pie, now they have almost 25% of the pie. Wasn't the country a better place for everybody when that money, and that is a lot of money, was more distributed through society? Yes. I asked you, are you going to give up your cars? No. What? Are you going to give up your cars? Give up my cars? Give up, give up. No, but I would, I would to, certainly pay a up? lot more in taxes. We if, should legalize marijuana and prostitution. And tax Good night, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>